My father went to a great deal of trouble during my youth to convince me that he had removed all of the poison from our bloodline. When he died, all of the treacherous kinslayers that are part of Merovinch's line were gone forever. But how could he be sure? I have been noticing that my brother Tyke is constantly undermining me in the smallest of ways. I am not my father, so I would prefer a peaceful solution. But if his disobedience continues, who knows what kind of man I might become. Hello and welcome connoisseurs of alternative history. Great kings and chieftains alike. We are here once again with Clovis the First on his journey to conquer all of the Gauls. Now, he may not succeed. The Visigoths down here are... They're, they're having a day of it. They've gotten quite strong. They're most likely going to be the big enemy of our future generations up here in our Frankish kingdom, though. We're doing quite well as well. Just not on the same scale as them. Surely, though, we are stronger than we have ever been before. We are in a war here that our mother joined that really has nothing to do with us and that we don't really want to participate in. We are currently wounded. Which isn't great. We got a scar when our our nose was nearly torn off. And uh, we've been thinking about what it's going to mean if we continue on this path of conquering all the way through Francia. We are going to rule over an enormous number of Gallo-Romans if we complete our goal. Also some Amanek people over here. But those we have good cultural acceptance towards, so we'd probably be able to rule them pretty easily. These There's these the Ripurians here, which are West German. But uh, we've pretty much been... We've pretty much been spending our whole time isolating them and uh, and trying to get rid of them. So that's a thing. But down here, we're just going to have so many Gallo-Roman citizens that we may have to consider hybridization. Of course, it would be a hybridization that highly favors our Greek, our, our non-Roman culture. That's a thing to think about into the future. Right now, it's not so important. We have let her go for a hook, I think, if I remember correctly. And we are currently not at any wars of our own, but there is this. Another single county war that could be very useful for us to just get done with right now, so we don't have to worry about it into the future. But I think we're gonna leave the uh we're gonna leave our marshal in charge because that's his literal job. That's just what he does for us, so. We're not calling in any allies. We did say we would hold court, but I think we're going to finish this little war first because it should be quite quick, especially if we keep running on high speed like we have been. So let's just get in here and get this thing done. Get in there. Hosting a grand tour. We cannot afford this grand tour, but we should host one because we could use the tanked money. Let's see if we can fund a grand tour relatively quickly. We gained the enemy banner, right? It's a war banner. It's a large wall ornament. I think we already have all of our large wall ornaments filled. We could put it on the prior pyre for prestige right now, or we could keep it and we could sell it which I think might be more valuable to us to keep it and sell it. So basically we will keep it and the RP of what we're doing here is that now it's in our possession, we will exchange their banner for them. They will send their banner back to them in exchange for a uh, for money. Yeah, we'll just get rid of this one too because we're never going to be able to put it up and we don't really want to anyway. Plus we get piety for destroying things like this. So we'll just get rid of those. And we'll continue our siege. This guy, can he be ransomed? Yes, but she won't. Uh, okay. I understand. I'm well aware of what it is to be poor. That's just me holding court. But again, we said we would do that after this uh, siege was finished. 
I want to switch this army over to a commander who is a siege expert because we have no siege engines and that will just help speed this up. While his numerous attempts to curry fa my favor have not gone unnoticed, I cannot help but feel irritated by Chieftain Raniskalas. Sudden interest in me. I cannot shake the feeling that the man's intentions are not pure. Uh, but he does, still has a certain kind of charm. So I lose stress. I gain stress from this, but I'm not sure why. I mean, I'm not against having friends. Let's just get him to leave me alone. That seems the most natural thing for me to do. I don't know who this guy is. It really has nothing to do with me. We should look at our prisoners, though, because we do have a tendency to forget prisoners exist and then... And then they get mad and we don't know what to do with them. So we will... Can you be ransomed for... No, only for a hook. That's a defeat in the war that our mother started. And we want to negotiate your release to recruit you. And this guy... Ooh, yes, we will also recruit you. Negotiate, release, recruit you. And this guy is the guy that... Okay, so we basically got him as swayed as he's gonna get let's abandon that now Let these guys go hopefully quickly finish our siege once the siege is done well oh, we have a lot to do we might do the hunt we might do the hunt there we go we've captured this person in the siege can he be ransomed yes he can be ransomed to himself for 10 gold good enough We've gained a new martial perk, so we're going to take this chivalrous dominance, which should give us another boost to our uh, uh, our knight effectiveness. It's now at 276%. Nice. <laughs> nice. Our, our knights are becoming probably, our, I should say, our champions. Uh, the... The men of our warband are becoming famous worldwide, most likely, at this point. We're going to enforce our demands on this person. Good. And now... We're going to grant this out. I guess we could give it to this countess. Does she have children? Yes, but not a male child. But, you know, I don't have a problem with that. You know, you can have this. Wait, that that's cross-border, right? That's no good. We don't want to... We don't... This is a completely different area. Fine, then most likely the best thing to do with this is not... Oh no, this. It's part of this territory here. So we have this count up here. We have our brother. We have our other brother. All right, so I'm just going to give this to another noble of Frankish culture. Right there. Hopefully he can find himself a wife and make some children and hold on to that territory for us. Let's get rid of this army. And we now can more or less hold a bit. I would like to... Yeah, there's no way we'll arrive there on time. Um, I would like to hold a hunt. But I do need about twice as much gold as I have right now. Might be a good time to consider more raiding this guy can be let go for a hook which is probably what we'll end up doing can't see anything else we would do with him so negotiate his release gain a weak hook let him go now, just looking at this how strong are these guys right now weaker than us we could raid into here maybe maybe just to continue to fund our wars our prestige is doing well, but we need we need a big jump still to be able to get to the next level so we can start taking big chunks out of the world. I feel like oh did did somebody in my territory do this? Oh he did this. He took their cat he took their hat off of them. <laughs> Cute. Um Alright, that's that's a thing that happened. Good for you. Good for you. You should definitely do that. As much as you feel like. I don't mind expansion through uh through our vassals at this point. There is no way to make any of this kind of, like, uh, clean. So, oh, up here, too. Up here, too. Look at you. Look at everybody around here all expanding our territory. 
without me making them do it. And we could kill this guy. We could just get rid of him. I think our, our treaty is over. Be nice to just take another little county war here, but we still have the money for it. Just eating up what we can while we wait till we're good enough to be able to um, do those duchy wars that we're going to need in order to make the next steps happen. So let's uh, raise all men at arms. He's not strong at all, right? No, he's not. So we'll just raise all men at arms here. Maybe just for the sake of it, we'll lead this one ourselves. We just want, we just haven't been leading many armies lately, so we'll just lead this one ourselves because it, we think that it, because it feels kind of right to do. If you know what I mean? I don't think he's going to attack us. Give our usual commanders a bit of a break and handle this ourselves. We are a good siege commander anyway, so that can be very helpful and useful. Up here, there is a rebellion going on. There's also a rebellion going on up here because it's all my brother's territory. Our kingdom is so unorganized. What we need ah, is we need a <laughs> we need a realm builder leader. Somebody not a not a a warrior, but a realm builder who's willing to to remove people from their positions in order to reorganize this better. Because that is not us. We're we don't care who rules what or what's where as long as we continue to get stronger and we continue to be able to succeed at our goals. We don't care about the specificity of that kind of thing. That's, that's not in Clovis's nature. Clovis's nature is to war <laughs> and to fight and to tell poems. I should probably actually try to find out whether or not there is anyone who I would like to like me better that I should send a poem to. We must have got some uh, some war bonus here. We must have got something. Oh no, we already finished the first siege. That's why there's two sieges. That's fine. Let's just zip through this. I don't think his army's going to come back, and I don't think that that there's any chance he's going to be stopping us down here. So let's just uh, eat up this another bit of territory. So we have a strategic impasse because we are good at this. We can make them do both. We can let them do as they wish, or we can pick one. I would prefer for them to do both, so we will do both. Get all the buffs for everyone. Win this war. Our wife is pregnant again, which is great. We've won yet another war down here with our spectacular four gold star army because they, uh, our knights are really good. <laughs> They're very good. So we're going to try to get some money for that guy. There's nothing really else up here we would do. Get rid of all this stuff. Someone is raiding up here. I wonder if this is their first raid because if it is... Then we probably won't get any money from this. I will raise... Let's just raise the men-at-arms again. And immediately send them. Then down here, I want to go to this guy here who I put in place, and I want to grant him this. There. I don't want to make anybody too strong, but I do want to distribute the power such that uh, such that we get some kind of like that, that nobody becomes too strong, right? We want people to become strong at about the same rate because it will slightly increase the chance of internal wars. So we have powerful vassals that are not on the council. But they're not good. I could... I could replace this guy. With my brother Tyke, just to get rid of his minus. I'm actually kind of fine with that. And then we could send him a poem. We're just not good enough at this for it to likely tur to turn out that he likes it, so... Uh, so let's not... What is this? This is an inspiration. He's decent. Eh. Not gonna worry about that. But since we're here, we might as well hold court. We did say we would do it this episode, so let's get on it. Seated on my, my throne, I gesture for my guards to open the doors of the hall. A stream of people file in. Gesture for the first in line to approach. Mayor Robert and Mayor Clodio match up to, march up to my throne. Their discontent is clear. It's so a concubine thing. Let's look at this purse. Oh, geez. Uh, yeah. 
Thanks. Thank you. What a wonderful gift. I've sort of been looking for a concubine, and I said I wouldn't take any concubines that didn't have something special about them, and my father turned down the beautiful concubine, and I have not turned down the beautiful concubine. We're just different people, me and my dad. It's just the way it is. I have different interests than he does. All right, my guest, Chararik, approaches the throne with a smirk on his face and bows deeply. Greetings, your majesty. During my recent trip to the Earldom of Norfolk, I learned some fascinating tidbits about several. I don't care. Oh, do I care about this? Nobody extorts me in my own court. A hefty sum. I'm not paying 55 gold for rumors. Not paying 55 gold for rumors. The woman who approaches my throne is clearly a commoner. My lord, she says. I represent the local community of Cambrai. And okay, so this is just... I mean, I lose stress if I throw her into prison. She is... That's the wrong person. She is not that accomplished of a doctor anyway, but she did save my nose. So we're going to give her this one. Because she did save my nose when that wrestling match nearly tore it off. So uh, we are not disfigured mostly because of her. Instead, we are ch charmingly scarred, which is, you know, nice. We have split Fran Francia in, pa in half with our many, many county wars down this way. That's good. We like that. We're missing a champion because we gained another one. That indicates that we might have become illustrious. We are now illustrious. So while we go on our rampage through France, the important thing to remember here is that we need to take these duchies. Um, we need to take these duchies. We need to always be attacking France first, if we can. Uh, Francia, I should say. Uh, because attacking them first will lead to more success, I'm pretty sure. Because they'll, we need them on cooldown. We need to be running through their five-year cooldowns as quick as possible. Possibly we take all of this territory through duchy, and then we take the rest of this through kingdom. If we ever do get that high, I think we might. I don't think there's any reason to wait on this. I have everything I need. We haven't tested our ally recently, so he may not join us, which may make this a little bit more difficult than we had hoped. But uh, that's... This is going to have to be the way it is. That was the closest point to her, to their capital. Their capital is down here. So let's, let's start down here in the south where we can attack the capital immediately. And will our ally actually join us? He will. Wonderful. So our daughter needs a guardian. She wishes to be... So she is charming. She wishes to be stabby. If we find her even a decent person to do this, I have like run out of good spy masters. I could actually go to my actual spy master because I know that he's okay. I could offer him my daughter as a ward. He can't do it, which means he's probably got two children of his own that he is looking after. Okay. If he has a spot available, this will do fine. You can do that for me. Thank you very much. What is this? Ah, oh, we have gained another dynasty perk. The fame of the Merovinge dynasty grows. More likely to get trade events when raiding. Send gifts. Cost 50% less. Seduce chance 15% higher. Gain prestige from seduce schemes. Interesting. Interesting. All right. I do like this, but I also kind of think we might want to go down here since we're doing so much raiding. Loot capacity. More likely to imprison characters after a successful seizure raid. Also, customs might be good for us. Activities. There's other things too, though. Glory. Warlo warfare. I think we do warfare. 
I think we're going to do warfare. I know, I know it's kind of cliche, but I think we're going to do warfare. That's another thing I forgot to do. I keep forgetting to do it, even though I keep looking in here. We have some changes we need to do. Uh, we're pushing up here, which is good. We want this to go up. Well, we want it to get to here. I don't know. Its natural level is right there. We can't really afford to increase this right now, but we do want to change this to a warlike court. We can afford it. We should do it at level one. We get another 10% night effectiveness, which is just great. So we'll just make it a warlike court right now. Maybe we increase our few servants just one more. I think we do that because that just puts us above three. What does three give us? Is three worth it? Compared to two? Actually, probably not. Unless we're going to hit four, which I think requires more than both of them. Yeah. Unless we're going to hit four, it's not really worth it because two is okay. Three doesn't matter. Four is good. So we're just going to stay where we are. But we did change to a warlike court, which will give us even more night effectiveness, which cannot, cannot be underestimated for its sheer power and usefulness. Let's just start right here. Again, we're not going for the war target first. We're going to siege the capital first. Going to raise all. Send ourselves right down in here. Just immediately. An extra hand. For all the authority I supposedly wield as king, I cannot be everywhere in my realm at once. There will always be those who forget to obey my orders once my attention is turned. This is where my vassal, Countess Brunhild, could come in, who has been faithfully enforcing, enforcing my degrees within her own domain. She could serve as my right-hand woman and take a more active role in mid Could she serve? as my right-hand woman and take more of an active role in administering my realm. I could really use this control growth, to be honest. Since it makes no one angry and I could use the control growth, we'll just do that. Excellent. So we now have a right-hand woman and we're going to go down here and siege their capital immediately. They're probably going to attack in my territory. Yep, they've done that. They're sieging there. That's pretty fine by me. What's a girl to do? As I enter the room, I notice my concubine, Esta, acting distant and aloof. I walk over to her and put my hand on her shoulder. What's the matter, I ask. She looks at me for a moment and says, It's this place. It's just so understimulating. Her shoulders have... Maybe you could socialize a bit. A new skill refreshes my mood. She could gain some intrigue. And see if she can become closer to my wife. She has a 60% chance of, of nothing happening or her, the relationship getting better and a 40% chance of forming a rivalry. And my second son, Ragnachar. Yes, yes, he can be named after my father. That's absolutely a great idea. I now have a son, Ragnachar. We have lost a siege and I really don't care. <laughs> I hope my ally heads out here soon to help. I don't know if he's even in a war of his own. He is. Well, I'll deal with her. Don't worry. We need this to finish first. And it doesn't even matter because we got it. That is twice in the lifetime of Clovis. But he has been at war with the French, or should I say, we're the French. That is twice in the lifetime of Clovis that he has taken the war leader in the first battle. He's going to become very famous, I think, for his daring capture raids. Let's just enforce our demands, proving that that silly siege was completely pointless, as we said that it was. I take a huge, 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 huge chunk of territory out of... Francia. Ha! Now that is what it looks like when things start to go quickly. This is probably our next target. We gotta not get ahead of ourselves. We gotta keep going every time. This is this guy again. Uh, okay. Uh, decline. Do we decline? They win. They gain opinion of us. They lose stress. We gain stress. I'm gonna decline that. I have no interest in this guy. He keeps trying to like get me to like him. Whoa. Let's just stop for a second. Too much stuff is happening and we're not doing enough about it. So faction created against me. That makes sense. Faction disbanded. Okay. Let's look at our prison and see who's in our prison. Are you worth money? You are not. 
I will demand your conversion and a hook. Get out of here. You, are you worth money? You are not. You are a good warrior. I would demand your conversion and recruit you. You won't do it. You won't do it. So it's either recruit or demand conversion. He won't do both. We'll get him later. Once he's here, it's pretty easy to get them to change their ways. So let's disband all here. Yeah, okay, we gotta we gotta figure out what to do with all of this. Now we don't currently have the duchy title, of course, because that is not how this goes. We got so much to do. We got a whole bunch of brand new all kinds of brand new uh, vassals. None of them should be particularly strong, though. Wait, how did this guy become a powerful vassal? There's no way. There's no way that I don't have vassals more powerful than this guy. He is intimidated by me and he is an old man. He has a son who doesn't like me any more than he does. Let's look at this. I've got to grant this out. I'm just going to grant it to a local noble of my culture, so that means that I'm not holding anything over. We now have a huge number of brand new vassals who absolutely despise me. We have no way to organize this differently. Many of them are intimidated by me. I really don't know how this guy became a powerful vassal. Strikes me that that's not possible. It really strikes me that he can't possibly be more powerful than other people. Like, both of these guys should be more powerful than him? Oh, he is now infirm. Which disqualifies him as leading my armies or as being a knight, I think. I don't know if it disqualifies him from being a knight. No, it hasn't. Okay. Like, I don't, I don't see it. I get how you were the other person's powerful vassal, but I mean, this guy and this guy are stronger than you. This guy isn't. Let's see what we see when we look in here. We got this guy. He's a new vassal. So we can give him this job. Uh, we will begin to... We could demand his conversion, but I don't think we're going to. Instead, I think we're going to sway him. Yeah, that seems about right. And we now have a bunch of chaotic vassals that have to be controlled, added to the pile of people inside of our kingdom. <laughs> the Frankish kingdom has, frankly, uh, it's gained greatly. So what is happening down here? What is your war, kid? Who are you war against? So this is a tyranny war. Right, so that's meaningless. So this is the next war for sure. This kid, he don't stand a chance against me. Uh, just, just so you know, he doesn't stand a chance against me. We can't do this immediately. He controls territory in literally three duchies. One of which we don't care about, one of which is what we're going to take, so we're going to take all of this. We can actually afford to do this right away because this is a piety war, which is great. I didn't realize that would be the case, which means there is no reason for us to wait. There is never a reason for us to wait when our enemies are this much weaker than us. So we are going to declare war again. But that war is going to be for next episode. Thank you very much for watching as Clovis begins to show his military might and start to actually take over the area. The big problem with growing militaristically at this speed is that you have a difficult time controlling the people inside your territory. The hope though, the hope is that we can get some of these people to change their opinion by doing unification of the two cultures. If we can form this hybrid culture once it's possible to do so, a lot of my vassals will change their mind about being upset. This guy won't do it. Not sure how much I care about him though. Of course, we're not there yet. I think we're not there yet. What are we looking for? 17% and not going up. 
I could begin the process going faster though by not worrying some ah, this is gonna happen pretty soon right this is gonna threshold over to uh, it's gonna be several more times around before that changes you know I think I think we start working on this I think we put off the conversions for now we start working towards this Because if we don't work on this, it will never happen. And it is important that it does, because this needs to be like... So this is per year, one per year. That's not a lot, which means we're probably going to have to do other things to make this happen. The next time we take Gallo-Roman territory, we might want to put some of their own people in charge of it. We also should probably save up for a tour at this point because a grand tour, not tournament, but tour, grand tour, which we really can't pay for, but even a taxation tour where we tour specifically like the new territories, not the old ones, like say this could be used to gain a very, very large amount of, this is actually not that bad. This could be used to gain a large amount of fast cultural development by doing cultural tours. Not the entourage, we want to look at this. Like, we could just make sure every single one of these is a cultural festival. You know, because a lot of these people even if they're not actually Gallo-Roman, their people underneath them are. So we could do this. This is a worthwhile endeavor. Yeah, I think this is something that we're going to try to work towards. Probably by doing a raid. Probably by raiding here. Probably now that our troops are significantly higher than theirs, I bet we can raid in this direction. Which means we may... We want to finish this war as quick as possible so that we don't really lose much, um... Much money, but that's all for next time. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again when we are here trying to consolidate the Gauls under the Frankish Kingdom and form a new, unified Franco-Gallic culture where we try to eliminate as much of the Roman from them and interject some of our own German traditions in their place. And I hope to see you then. Goodbye for now.